Hey Life Groups, so good to be sharing with you guys again this week. I'm going to be unpacking a little bit of my sermon, but actually maybe taking it a step further and speaking about how we can be generous with our love. I'm going to look at a semi-popular parable, um, but if you missed Sunday, I spoke about this idea of how we love people well. And I mentioned that the best way that we can love people for the rest of our lives and love them well is if we love them from the point of view of how we are loved by God. Look at the story of Hosea and the instruction that he got from God to go marry a promiscuous woman in the name of Goma. And how in their relationship it displayed a love that is seemingly unnatural, that is supernatural, that goes beyond what is earthly and it looks at a far deeper, more potent level of love. And we get to have access to that love and our relationship with God. So I'm hoping that you guys have had some time to listen to a song. If you don't know what the song was, it's uh, The One You Love by Elevation Worship. If anything, have a quick listen now, and then we'll continue on. But from now, the point of us being loved by God, we've taken the time to unpack and think about just how loved we are by God. And we have somewhat of an idea. And I will begin to make the incremental steps of choosing to love others in the same way that God chooses to love us. Now, the... the precursor, the preface to loving others well is really, really understanding that you are absolutely loved by God. The enemy will try to say, how can, love, how can God love someone like you who has done this or is doing this or um, thinks like this or behaves like this? And that's fine. God is still looking at you and saying to you, I love you. I am unbelievably proud of you. I have the best plans in store for you. So when we get that, I think we give ourselves the best chance to then begin to love people well. We've got to look at a testimony by Mike and Inga. And stories like that exist in our roles, in our church. So we get to love people well from the point of view of being loved well by God. Now I'm going to look at a parable that most of us might know. And it's a parable of the Good Samaritan. And this, I, I suppose the idea that I'm introducing this evening is um, loving people generously. And that generosity also goes beyond how you and I experience earthly love, but actually goes to a much deeper level of how you and I experience heavenly love from God. So I'm going to read it quickly. Um, and this is essentially a seemingly smart person asking Jesus a question try to try and trap him. But Jesus is far more clever than that. Uh, so Luke chapter 10, verse 25, says this. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself, which is where we're going to be focusing a little bit on today. And Jesus says, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. So the guy's like, now you can imagine this. He was like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm about to get this, this fool. He, I'm about to catch him out. Um, but he answered to justify himself. So he asked, who is my neighbor? Well, you see, if you say, love your neighbor as yourself, and it's written in the law, then who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, <laughs> which is quite interesting, he just tells a story, a parable. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. The supposed man of God just walks on the other side of the street because he doesn't want to love this person generously. So you can imagine his version of love was quite arrogant and full of itself. Um, so too, a Levite seemingly the high societal ranking. Um, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side as well. But a Samaritan, uh, was, has, as he traveled, but a Samaritan as he traveled, came where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. 
So Jesus asked, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? Now the expert of the law had no uh, way out except to say, the one who had mercy on him. So Jesus says, go and do likewise. So the, at the back end of this evening, the instruction I suppose that I would submit to us is go and do likewise. But more than giving that, I want just to take a moment and just talk about experiences or moments as someone has chosen to show you love that goes far beyond earthly experience of love. That's like, like it's almost like, oh my goodness, this is just too much. I can't accept this much love from this person. I can't accept this much generosity. I can't accept this much mercy. I can't accept this much care. So don't you guys begin to chat amongst each other on how or share a story of how someone loved you far beyond what you had expected. Fantastic. I'm hoping the discussions were absolutely amazing. But now we're going to move into action mode. We're going to begin to take steps on loving our community ever so well. So now we've spoken about how someone showed you an exorbitant or an unreasonable, like reckless amount of love that led you thinking, oh my goodness, this is just too much. Now I want us to begin to think of people in our own spaces, in our roles, proverbially speaking. Um, that we can begin to now show love to, that is seemingly out of this world, that is seemingly too much, that is seemingly supernatural, that is seemingly too good to be true. Because we've walked a little bit of the journey of understanding we are loved by God. We ourselves have been in situations where we experienced love from people that is just, oh my goodness, this is just too much. But as with the Good Samaritan, there are people in our lives, in the roles in our churches, in the streets in our city that are bleeding and they need the love that you and I get to experience from God. Our city needs the love that you and I have to offer that we receive from God. So won't you <laughs> and your group begin to chat about where you can begin to express the love that you experience from God? What's the first step? What's the one thing that you can do this week that can show the love that you experience from God? I can almost guarantee that when we live our lives this way, the culture, the climate, the city that we live in is going to look ever so differently. Or forget the city, make it smaller. Your own circle of influence will look ever so different when you and I choose to step into spaces, loving them in the way that you and I receive love from God. What an absolute privilege. We get to change and shape and, sh and shake environments just by how we choose to love. So you and I get to be the good Samaritan in the story. So Jesus is saying to both you and I, go and do likewise. So once you begin to share stories of what you and your life group can do together to love your people in your communities well. Amazing. I'm going to wrap this up a little bit neatly, um, but I'm hoping that the conversation is and the discussion that you guys had about what first step you guys can begin to take to love your people well is exciting and stirs up faith within you. Um, but m more than anything of the action part of what I'm speaking about, I think we must always, always revert back to how deeply we are loved by our good and faithful Father. Because that is the building block of everything that you and I choose to do when it comes to loving people well. We need to love them from a full tank, not an empty one. So we should always consistently be running back to the Father to experience more of His love, that we can begin to influence and impact our environments, that when we walk into rooms, the color of the environments begins to change. So great being with you, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.